Are You a Leader? Episode 88. Are you ready to make your law firm a profit generating machine that will free up your time and skyrocket your impact? With more than two decades of business growth experience and having proven that you can be successful while prioritizing your family and your impact, introducing the Profit with Law podcast. I am your host, the creator of the firm differentiator 10x effect, Moshe Amsel. Well, hello and welcome to another episode of Profit with Law. I am your host, Moshe Amsel, and I appreciate you taking the time to listen to this show when you have so many options out there. Recently, I posted on Facebook on my status that I have found uh, these days, and for those of you who are listening to this in the future, this is being recorded when we're still in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic. And uh, I posted on Facebook that these days I have found that I am not consuming my usual fare of podcast episodes. Uh, I'm an avid podcast listener, consume a lot of content, and I do that when I am in the car, transporting my kids around, going to and from daycare, going to the gym, uh, sometimes at the gym, also when I'm taking a shower. And now I find that when I'm taking a shower, I'm doing it when everyone is sleeping, so I can't listen to a podcast then, and I'm not doing any driving, and even when I'm doing cooking or, or uh, you know, loading the dishwasher, emptying the dishwasher, things like that, uh, it's always while I'm also uh, conversing with my wife, conversing with my kids, and put you know I have bluetooth headphones and I could put them in and listen when I'm doing those things but the opportunity to just be alone is really not there and so I understand that if you're listening to this that you are you're putting this before a lot of other things or you're making it a priority and I appreciate that I appreciate that you've chosen this show to listen to and Uh, One thing that I'm going to say is if you are um, that avid a listener and you're appreciating the show that much, then I can really use your help. And what I'm going to tell you is something that you have heard me say before, but you know what? Maybe you have a little bit more time on your hands right now. Uh, Maybe you have not necessarily time on your hands, but time that you're sitting there that you're able to poke around on your phone and do something that you wouldn't otherwise be able to do. And that is to leave a rating and review for this show. When people evaluate which show to listen to, where to go, where to tune in, what to try out for the first time, they look at those ratings and reviews to make that decision. And we can use as many listeners as we can get. Uh, I don't do this for the fun of it. You know, I'm here to, to serve and to lead uh, and to share a, a message, share my opinion, my expertise, uh, and really just to help the people who are listening to this. And the more people that listen, the more people I can help. And I cannot do that without your help. I need you to spread the word. I need you to put a rating and review there. I need you to sh- tell your friend, your associate, your colleague, hey, I listened to this show. You should check it out. It's a really good show. Uh, And it's things like that that are going to fuel the growth of the podcast. So if you are listening to this right now, right in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic and everything that's going on, then you are one of my people. And the little favor that you can do for me right now is to do that rating and review uh, on the podcast and also go and share this with somebody. You can share it out on social, sure, but share it with one person. Share it with somebody who would really get something out of the show. You know, and think of, of one of your friends, one of your associates, somebody who can really benefit from it and share it with them. And I'm just taking a quick look at my podcast player to see if uh, there are any new ratings and reviews that I should be sharing. Um, and nope, I have all the ones that I see have already been read out loud on the air, but if you do leave a rating and review, I definitely will 
uh, read that out loud on the air and thank you publicly. So enough of that, enough of uh, the stuff that I need and about me, and let's talk about you. And I titled this episode, Are You a Leader? Because... I know that it's we're we're at the point where you probably are tired of hearing talk about COVID nineteen, coping with the pandemic, opportunistic, forward looking thinking. I mean, we've been inundated with that stuff, and you know whoever came first and started talking about it first, but now everybody's hopping on the bandwagon and there's a ton of information out there, webinars and things, and, and the market's confused about the, the financial help that the government's providing, uh, PPP, rebate checks, uh, you name it. And there's just so much happening and coming at us that at this point, you're probably like, oh no, not another COVID-19 episode. So let me just tell you that this episode has nothing to do with pandemic, but at the same time, it has it, it's very time appropriate. It has everything to do with what's going on today. And it really is something that has, I've been thinking about as I've been watching different people and how they behave during this time. And it becomes obvious who is a leader and who is not. And somehow, I, I, I stay out of politics like, with a hundred foot pole, but politics is going to come up today. And, um, you know, our government figures have an opportunity right now to demonstrate their leadership or to demonstrate the fact that they are not a leader. And I ask you to look at your county, your state, your country, and look at your leadership and identify who your leaders are. And when you're doing that, I want you to start to pay attention to how you are selecting those people. How are you identifying who you are saying, this is a true leader, and this is a politician who has absolutely no idea how to lead? And when you start to look at each person and evaluate that question, you're going to start to recognize that there are certain attributes that you feel makes somebody a leader. Now, I could sit here on the podcast and I can give you, I can say that there's seven attributes to leadership. And if you have these seven attributes, then you're a leader. But I'm not going to because you get to define what a leader looks like. Now, I'm going to try to help you. I'm going to try to share some things that I think define a leader, uh, but they're my opinion. And there's a hundred books out there that teach you how to be a leader, uh, or at least try to teach you how to be a leader. But ultimately, to be a leader, you have to be acting in a way that you view a true leader to be. And why would you want to be a leader? You're a law firm owner. Why would you want to be a leader? Why are we talking about this on this podcast? So I think that's a good place to start answering that question. And you would want to be a leader in any aspect of your life. As a parent, you want to be a leader to your children. As a owner of a law firm, you want to be a leader to your staff. But I don't have any staff. I'm a solo. Well, guess what? You still need to be a leader. You are your staff. You need to lead yourself. Uh, you need to be a good example for yourself. You need to encourage yourself to step into your own shoes and rise up to the challenge. But there's more to leadership than that. As an attorney and as a law firm owner in your community, you have an, a unique opportunity to influence people around you. People look up to professionals. People look up to individuals who enjoy a status that is elevated. And as an attorney, you hold an elevated status. And people look up to you. And it's what you do on that pedestal. It's how you act on that pedestal that allows you to demonstrate leadership or demonstrate your lack of leadership. There is no in-between. And this is a choice you get to make 
you get to choose how you act and the the, the choice that you make can define your future and there's no time like the present the podium has never been bigger than it is right now people are home and they're looking for leadership they're looking for somebody to hang their hat on they're looking for somebody to look up to they're looking for somebody to watch their stuff this is your opportunity to get out there in your community and pu be public and demonstrate how people should be acting, how people should be behaving. It doesn't matter what practice area you're in. This is about establishing yourself as an individual that people look up to, that people see your name and they go, that is a leader. You know, there was a small business that um, got some press the other day. They gave out uh, hand sanitizers and masks to 500 residents in, in, a, in a community. Now, that company is, a, is leading. It doesn't matter what business they're in. It doesn't matter what product or service they sell. There's 500 people who got impacted by their actions. There's 500 people who are going to be inspired by the fact that somebody went out of their way to acquire something that they cannot get themselves and provide it to them, no questions asked, just out of the goodness of their heart. So when we start to look at why should you be a leader, you need to recognize that Everything that happens in your law firm happens because people are judging you. They're evaluating you and your ability to get them the result that they want. And if they look up to you as a leader, if there are people talking about you as a leader, if word on the street is how amazing you are, that is going to be the defining moment for many of these people. That is going to be what drives your business forward, not whether you can do the job well or not. So the first question that you need to ask yourself is, do I want to be a leader? Do I want to be a leader for my household? Do I want to be a leader for my firm? Do I want to be a leader in my community? And if the answer is yes, then the rest of this episode is going to be very relevant to you. And if the answer is no, then... Well, I guess you can <laughs> tune in Thursday uh, to the next episode because you're not going to relate to the rest of the episode. So what defines somebody as a leader? Now, I don't know the answer to this question, but I do know some things that I observe as a leadership role. One thing that I know factually affects my willingness or ability to follow somebody else as a leader is if they lead by example. If they don't just talk the talk, but they actually walk the walk, to me, that's an attribute of a leader. And it actually was a compelling reason for me to make a, a tremendous change in my, in my personal and, and health journey back last July. And I've talked about it here on the podcast, uh, but essentially in January, and it took me six months to come around and actually take action on it. But January of 2019, I had a conversation with one of my coaches. And in that conversation, I was talking about my struggle with weight, my struggle with making time for exercise, for taking care of myself. And my coach helped me to observe that I was being a poor leader for my children. I was not demonstrating to them a way of life that I want them to live. And he was so right. And it inspired me to take massive action. And in July, I started on a health journey, very quickly decided that I wanted to compete in a triathlon, and I trained for that triathlon. And my kids observed me doing that. And they came to my race 
and they were there cheering me on and watching me, uh, number one, accomplishing something I set out to do, but number two, seeing that I was able to continue to build a business, to run a family, and to also to be a dad and to also go and, and exercise every day for an hour, an hour and a half uh, to prepare for this moment. And a month after that, I went to uh, a friend of mine lost his, his son when he was nine months old and he started a non-for-profit. It's called the Happy Jack Fund and they help families who have lost a child. They do an annual 5K. It's in October. So it was a few weeks after my triathlon, two weeks after my triathlon. I forget how long after, but a couple of weeks after my triathlon, we went to this 5K. Now, I never competed in that 5K. I go there to support them. Sometimes I've walked it. Sometimes, you know, sometimes I did the, the stroller route, um, you know, but I'm always there to to support the organization. We've been going. It's I think this was the seventh year that they did it. And we went. And this time I was going to run. I had just come off my triathlon. A 5K is a piece of cake. Uh, so I was going to run in the 5K. Now, they did a, a little kids race beforehand. Now, mind you, the kids are, you know, ages ranging from 5 to 12. And they're doing a, a little quarter mile um, uh, family friendly race right at the beginning to kick off the 5K. And my four year old sees that they're going to be doing a race. And he says, Daddy, I want to race. And we pin a bib on his jacket and we put him up there. And mind you, he's like half the size of the shortest and smallest kid that's going to be racing. And he gets up there at the line and they start running and he starts running behind them. And literally within 20 seconds or 30 seconds, there is not a kid in sight. I mean, they are gone and he is running as fast as his little legs can carry him. And he goes and runs the entire race, all the entire quarter mile, never stops, never looks around him to see, wow, I'm the only one doing this. I, I'm going to quit now. That didn't enter his mind. He looks at me when he crosses the finish line. He looks at me and he says, I ran a race like daddy. And to have such instant gratification of what I set out to do to lead my, my kids by example, to demonstrate to them a life that I want them to live through my own actions. I felt like I was a true leader that day. I felt like I really stepped into my shoes as a dad that day. And that is an attribute of a leader. Somebody who leads by example who doesn't just tell people to be on time, they're on time themselves, who, who leads with integrity, who leads with love and devotion and passion, uh, somebody who does all the things that they want you to do as an employee, as a client, as a, as a member of society. And, you know, when, uh, one of the things that, that people say is, oh, you know, you got to see what, what do people do when they're not in the public light when they're not being judged by other people. And that's what defines a leader. When you do your actions are the same publicly and privately when you're truly that person, that's when you're a leader. Now, another attribute that I think is important for a leader is clear and open communication. Clear and open communication, I think, is, is a tremendous attribute of a leader. And I can find no better example than my own personal experience over the last four weeks being a resident of New York State. And I can tell you that going into the COVID pandemic back at the end of last year, um, le going into January of 2020, there was a new jail reform bill that was passed you know, that the governor signed off on. So this is Governor Andrew Cuomo signed off on this bill for jail reform, and it was an awfully executed bill. Um, 
it, the idea was a good idea. So the, the idea was basically not to waste prison space expense on you know people who are uh, who have done uh, uh, nonviolent crimes and to basically you know give them a a, a ticket or or you know uh, a, a, a um an accusation or whatever you know they're charged with a crime and then let them go without needing bail and the problem is that they were too broad in their definition of what was a nonviolent crime and uh, there was a crazy um stories popping up of the types of things that you know people were being released without bail uh you know somebody um attacked uh, another person um physically and spit on them but there was no uh there were no weapons there wasn't any any um uh, real risk to life, and they were so they were immediately released, only to go and do it again two hours later. You know, um, that was the kind of stuff that, that we were going into the pandemic with. You know, thinking that our governor had lost his mind, and when this thing started, Governor Cuomo started doing a daily briefing to the citizens of the state. And he has just been very open and honest and upfront and frank with exactly what the situation is, whether it was good, whether it was bad. And he was always on the mark with where he needs to be focusing his efforts. Very early on, he was talking about how we're not going to have enough hospital beds. We need to have a solution for that. And for those of you following the news, you know, they outfitted the Javits Center as a hospital, which is now ready to go. And it looks like there's a good chance that we might not need it. You know, like New York is plateauing and we might not need it. But imagine if that wasn't the case. Imagine if people hadn't listened to the 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 uh, dictates and, and what we needed them to do as far as social distancing. And this thing continued to climb. That that hospital would be ready just in time for when we needed it. And literally uh, you know new york state went and and bought on the open market ppe um gear now i'm in no way saying that we have enough that we you know we don't have the problem that other people have we do um it, it's a big problem their personal protective equipment is very lacking uh those of you who know you've listened to my show long enough you know that i'm a paramedic uh i have not been actively working as a paramedic during this time that's a, a story for another day. Uh, but I have a lot of friends out there, a lot of uh, close friends that are on the front lines of this. And they're literally wearing the same mask all week because there's not enough masks to go around. You know, they're going into one patient room and then another patient room with the same gown on, with the same mask on. So they're, you know, these they're literally exposing people who may not have the disease with the attire that they're wearing to protect themselves. And it goes against everything that we're taught in our training um, about proper use of, of PPE. And it, it's, it's really a bad, bad thing. But what's been happening here in New York state is that this daily briefing, that's exactly the same time every single day. So 11 AM Eastern governor Cuomo goes live with his, you know, his top, people there next to him to be able to answer any questions that are specifically in their under their realm of jurisdiction they have the reporters there to ask a q a at the end and it's it's like it's a press conference but it's streamed live and as citizens of the state of new york we are kept in the loop up to date with graphs and numbers and and detail of exactly what's going on, what direction we're heading, how bad it is, how whether it's getting worse, getting better, um, and and well and the behind the scenes of the situations that they're dealing with, like unemployment. They had to bring a brand new system online for unemployment to accommodate the influx of of applications and the change in the applications because of the new rules from the CARES Act. You know things like that. What has happened through that daily communication is my view as a citizen has changed about Governor Andrew Cuomo. And so has it changed for many, many other New Yorkers. I'm going to assume a large 
pop part of the population now looks up to him as a leader where they might not have looked up to him as a leader before. And that is because during this time of crisis, he has prioritized communicating with his constituents openly and honestly and predictably with consistency. You know, when I started this podcast, I knew through my own experience, I've I had a podcast before this. I wouldn't even call it having a podcast. I did, I think, seven episodes over two years. But I had a podcast before. I've listened to podcasts many times. And I, and I knew going into this that the only way to b- succeed as a podcast host, to have a show that succeeds, is to have it consistent. That every single week, week in, week out, my listeners can know to rely and count on the episode getting released. And that they can turn their phone on in the morning and update their podcast app on a Tuesday morning. And boom, my show is there for them to listen to. Now I've had my my moments where we released on Wednesday instead of Tuesday. There's definitely been some occasionally a couple of times like that. But, you know, other than intentionally missing a week if we did that. I don't even know if we did, but if we intentionally missed a week, that's one thing, but we we otherwise have been consistent. And it's be, it's not because I want to be a leader, but it's because I, I understood that communicating consistently is extremely important when you're dealing with a public audience who's coming to rely on you. So when you're a leader, you need to recognize that people are relying on you. You need to have consistency in your communication. You need to have clear communication. You need to be open. You need to be honest. You can't be putting on a front. Um, as a polar opposite, and this is where I, I'm, I don't even know if I want to venture here, but I'm going to say it anyway because it's so obvious to me. And I don't have necessarily a negative opinion or a positive opinion about the president of the United States of America going into this. And it really bothered me that there was that, that there's such strong opinions out there in both directions, because I think that we should get along. We should be living in harmoniously. And it, it seems to be an issue that pits a lot of Americans against each other uh, where they take it personally. But President Trump has also been doing his briefings. But his briefings contradict each other day to day. What he's saying and what his people are saying contradict each other. It's obvious that they're not being open and upfront and honest with us. It's obvious that he's going off script from what he was supposed to say all the time. And he's coming up with his own things. And when people ask him questions, legitimate questions, he gets in their face and puts them down as a person and as a human being instead of answering the question. Now, that's not a leader. That is not a leader. I don't know what it is, but it's not a leader. It does not imbue a feeling of us, uh, of, of looking up to somebody and, and recognizing that they are going to be able to solve this problem for me. You know, unfortunately, I don't think that I shouldn't say I don't think I don't get the feeling from watching President Trump that he is going to be able to solve this problem for the United States. And that is a scary thought when he's the president. But my point is that because his communication is not consistent, because it's not clear, because he just makes a press conference willy-nilly without planning it out, without the population knowing that the president is going to be live every single day at this and this time to give you an update on the situation, without the um, information being consistent and accurate day to day. And one day, you know, one day he's saying that we've got this thing completely under control. And the next day he's telling us that we can lose 200,000 lives. Uh, You know, like that does not make people feel comfortable. That does not give people that sense of security that they need. That I'm sorry, President Trump, you're supposed to be a leader. But that does not make us feel like you're leading us. So those are two examples that I bring from politics because I think that that's an important attribute. I think that recognizing that communication can be so powerful 
you have this opportunity to show up in your community and to communicate. To You can collaborate with other community leaders. You don't have to be the mouthpiece for the community. You don't have to be front and center, but you could collaborate with others to create a consistent message, to create unity, to, to, to do something to give people hope, to help people move forward. And it does not have to have anything to do with your area of law. This is about establishing yourself as a leader. This is about, you know, like if you're, if you have staff, then you need to be doing uh, a weekly briefing, if not a daily briefing with your staff. That's consistent. Same time every day. Even though normally you wouldn't meet every day, you wouldn't have daily meetings. It doesn't need to be long. You should be having daily meetings. Your staff are worried every single day. Is today the day that I'm going to lose my job. Even if they're busy, they have to be thinking the economy's in the tanker. That you know, people are losing their jobs everywhere. I mean, it's all over the news, it's all over the he- the headlines. It's obvious to them that people are staying home, and there's a lot of people who are not earning money right now, and that has to affect every business, including law firms. So, and I'm not saying that it should affect your law firm. I, I did a lot of work to talk about how much opportunity is out there. Um, but your, your employees are not thinking that way. They are not entrepreneurs. They are employees. And they look to you for their paycheck. And they look to you to give them that clear communication of what's happening and that they're safe and their job is safe. And they can focus on their work without worrying about whether their job is safe. Communication is everything. Make it consistent, make it frequent, and be open and honest with them. Don't veil the truth. Don't cloak it. Um, if you're indeed struggling, if there's a chance that they're going to be laid off, you you need to share that with them. You need to be open and honest with them. You also need to give them an opportunity to help you solve the problem. You need to collaborate with your team. They, you want them pulling in, all, in, di- in direction with you. Imagine if you're on a boat and the boat, springs a leak and it needs to be and it, you know it needs to be fixed or or forget springing a, a leak you're on a boat and and there's a storm that comes in and think of the olden days where everybody is 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 rowing an oar you you might be the captain of the boat but you've got 20 people behind you who are rowing you need them to all row in unison to be able to make it through the storm you need to all row in the same direction to be able to make this happen. If you can't get everybody rowing in the same direction, if you can't get them with conviction to be behind you, then you're not going to make it. And guess what? They might surprise you. They might say, don't pay me for two weeks. Don't pay me for a month. Let's get. Let's fix it. They might say, uh, we can defer my salary or uh, I can work for less. Or they might come up with ideas of how you could bring in more clients, how you could solve the financial the financial issues that you're facing. Your staff will surprise you. Not they might. They will surprise you. So be open and honest with them. Share it with them. Ask them for input. Ask them for ideas. Let them know that you have their backs, that you are doing everything you can to make this work, to keep them on board, and to be able to continue moving forward. So what other attributes does a leader have? Well, a leader has vision. A leader is a visionary. A leader is able to see the future before other people. And I don't mean that you're able to predict the future, but a leader is able to be a few steps ahead of everybody else in their analysis of a situation. And seeing the, the, the coming tide. And, you know, in the movies, they depict it like the, you know, like uh, my earliest memory of this is in the movie Bambi, where the, the um, Bambi's father or grandfather, whoever the, the deer with the antlers is, um, you know, he's like the great king of the forest because he's wiser than everyone else. He's able to sense that danger you know, before what, when it's imminent, before it, uh, you know, it gets there. 
and that is the leader, right? That's why he's the king. He's he's developed that sense to be able to determine whether there's danger coming. And it's not just danger, but it's also the good stuff, right? So as a leader, you're also a visionary. You're able to see problems ahead. You're able to navigate around those problems. You're able to see good times. You're able to see opportunity. And you're able to step into that opportunity. You know, for example, right now, um, many people are thinking about, you know, what am I doing right now? How am I going to survive this? And, you know, what do I do day to day? Like, how do I how do I get through today? And as a leader, you have to be looking at the scenarios of, you know, what are the potentials that are going to happen here? Are we going to end up at home for four months, for six months, for a year? What's going to happen when this thing goes away? You know, how are people going to be afraid to leave their homes? What kind of impact is that going to have on my law practice? What, how does that affect this practice area? How does it affect my geography? Where, you know, where my business is located? Um, and you have to start thinking about how you're going to navigate around that. And you have to start having your team plan for that and, and come up with scenarios of, you know, what are we going to do if this happens? What are we going to do if this happens? And start to have a plan in place so that you, you're navigating ahead of the storm, so that you've, you, you, you're clearing a path for yourself that's going to get you through this where others are going to get trapped and, and you know eaten up by the storm. And I don't mean to put anybody else in danger here, but as a leader, you are able to see that vision. You're able to see that future. You're able to sense it you're able to um, create that expectation and also to communicate it, right? So it goes back to the communication. So do you have a vision? You need to be able to communicate the vision. So you kind of need all of these things to be a great leader. All right, so I'm going to end it there. I don't want to take up uh, too much of your time. I know that it's hard to get to listen to these podcasts, so I don't want to ramble on for an hour. I've been going long enough as it is, uh, more than a half hour. So hopefully this is helpful for you and uh, you, you're inspired to take some action and to step into your role as a leader. I think that every single one of us has it in us to lead. We just have to make a decision to be a leader and then we have to stick to it. We have to show up authentically. We have to communicate. We have to, vi we have, to have a vision. We have to envision the possibilities and, and what the future holds for us. And if you can take those three attributes together, you can lead. You can lead your family. You can lead your law practice. You can lead your community. You can develop into a tremendous leader. However, what, however you want to lead, however you want to take that, it's yours for the taking. So with that, if this episode was helpful to you, if you think that somebody else can benefit from it, please share it with them. Uh, tell them to check it out. And if this is your first time listening to the podcast, you're not a subscriber yet, there is a little button that says subscribe on it. Just subscribe to the show so you, let, you are notified when new episodes go live. We have a great interview coming up on Thursday, and I will then be with you again solo on Tuesday next week. Take care. Thank you for tuning into the Profit With Law podcast. Your feedback is extremely valuable to us as well as helping us reach more people with this valuable content. Please leave us a rating and review in your favorite podcast directory. Join us again next time when we are back with even more strategies to profit with law.